Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today, we are going to be focusing on the development of landforms in the upper course. So as rivers flow from their source to their mouth, they usually pass through three main courses. These are the upper course, which is closest to the source and therefore is located in the mountains. The middle course and the lower course, which is usually closest to the sea, where the mouth is. The way the river behaves and the landforms it produces will vary with the courses of the river. The upper course of the river is far from the base level and water therefore erodes the beds more than the banks. This is known as vertical erosion. Some of the features that are formed in the upper course include V-shaped valleys, interlocking spurs, waterfalls, potholes, rapids, and most of these features are the result of vertical erosion. Let's first look at V-shaped valleys. V-shaped valleys form in highlands near the source of the river. Here, the water erodes the bed of the channel, making it deeper. As vertical erosion continues, the sides of the channel will be exposed and lengthened. Now, as the sides are exposed, they are going to come under the impact of denudation processes such as weathering and mass wasting, and this will cause those sides to be widened. Over time, a V-shaped valley is created as weathering and mass wasting widens the sides while the river itself deepens the bed by vertical erosion. So here's another look back. Now it's important to know that as a river makes its way along its course, it does not usually flow straight along its course. In most cases, the river will come across a certain obstacles and will be forced to swing around those obstacles in order to continue on its journey. As the river swings around its obstacle, the shape of the river will therefore change.
while the river is going around those obstacles, remember the dominant type or do dominant way in which the river will be eroding is vertically. So it will be deepening its channel while it is going around the various obstacles. And these obstacles are usually more resistant rocks. So over time, as the river erodes its beds and go around the obstacles of resistant rocks, spurs are usually created. These spurs usually form a zip-like pattern and we call this pattern by which the, the spurs are interlocking or by which they form this zip-like pattern. We call it uh, interlocking spurs. Now a spur itself is similar to a headland that we find along the coast. The headland we know is a highland that projects outwards to the sea. When it comes on to a spur, the spur is found inland. And it is also highland, but in, 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 in this case, it is jutting or projecting outwards to lower land. And this lower land is usually the river valley. So let's look back at this. Now another feature found in the upper course of the river is a waterfall. Waterfall uh, can be identified where the river flows rapidly over a bed which has been steepened. So the waterfall develops where the bed consists of harder rocks, of course, of softer rocks. This will result in differential erosion. Differential erosion means that erosion is taking place at different rates for different types of rocks. So as we can see in this diagram, the river is flowing over its bed. There is a, a hard rock, of course, and there is soft rocks, soft rock down course. While the hard rock will be more resistant to erosion, the softer rock will be more susceptible to erosion. And so erosion will take place at a faster rate over the soft rock. So as the soft rock is eroded faster than the hard rock, the bed of the channel is therefore steepened, allowing the water to speed up as it passes over that section. So with time, erosion will increase and the bed will get even steeper. And so the waterfall will 
develop even more. Because the river speeds up as it is moving along the waterfall, the water as it moves down that steep slope is going to start under cutting the rock. And as it undercuts the rock, a plunge pool will be developed at the base of the waterfall and an overhang will also be created at the top of the waterfall. The overhang is of course unsupported from below and uh, will begin to weaken and break up. Eventually, the overhang will collapse. As the overhang collapses, the waterfall will start to retreat, of course. This is an example of headward erosion taking place. Now, as we can see in this diagram, as the waterfall continues to retreat over time, a steep and narrow valley will be created called a gorge. The gorge usually extends from the point where the original waterfall was located to the current location of the waterfall. Another feature that is a bit similar, but not exactly the same as a waterfall, is a rapid. Rapids are areas where the bed develops an undulating pattern, which results in an increase in the velocity and turbulence of the river. This undulating pattern is usually the result of the bed being uneven and the unevenness of the bed is in turn often the result of alternating bands of hard and soft rocks which cause differential erosion so that the softer rocks are eroded faster than the harder rock. So as we can see, the water is moving faster because of this undulating pattern in the riverbed. Now the final feature that we are going to look at which is also associated with the upper course of the river is a pothole. A pothole is a circular or cylindrical hole formed in the riverbed when a circular current of water carrying small pebbles and other sediments begin to wear away a rock surface.
So a typical way in which potholes develop is where we have a slight dip in the river bed and this slight dip uh, or or dent uh, or or depression that we find in the river bed could be the result of a number of factors we could for example have a joint or a fault uh, which is a, a line of weakness and because of that line of weakness uh, a greater level of erosion takes place there because water is able to get into that space and erode it even more it could be could also be the result of softer rocks and therefore that area uh, experiencing a higher rate of erosion. Whatever is the case, because of the existence of that little depression in the bed, sediments often get uh, trapped in that area. And so as the river continues to flow and the, the water tends to be very turbulent in the upper course, it will cause the sediment that is trapped to start to swirl around. And as it swirls around, abrasion will take place, which is a type of erosion. And so the, a hole is going to be carved out in the river bed. With time, this hole is going to get deeper and wider. Okay, everyone. Thank you for watching again. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel.